Hello, everyone out there. This is going to be my follow-up to the uh, Celestron 7x50 Comatron 10x50 uh, comparison I had. Uh, as you can see, these are the Comatron 12x70s. Um, just got them in today. Still haven't completely unpacked everything. You see it came in a pretty good-sized box. And just to compare it to its, uh, once I remove it from the packaging, we'll compare it to its little brother, the 7x50s. And already, I'm feeling the weight. I can tell these are about three and three and a half, four pounds, I would say. So, uh, to start it here. First of all, I'd say they're packed pretty well. Uh, this box came inside of a larger box, which was very well packaged to prevent binoculars. Most important component that you'll need with heavier binoculars is your tripod adapter. I recommend saving all of your packaging materials in case you have a problem. Now these are still kind of warm from being on the truck. And of course, more silicon gel. But already, same type of strap that comes with the, uh, with the smaller brothers, but a little more uh, robust, I'm afraid. Good. Pretty similar manual, which shows both of them on there. Pretty much the same details in there. Should be exactly the same, except for some minor pretty good heavy lens cap, dual lens cap cover. This is easier to keep track of than having two of them because with two of them you lose one you know these you can tie to a strap which will stay tied to the main strap so the only thing you have to keep track of is the, uh, the objective lens covers. As you can see they each come with a case which I think this one's pretty nice uh, and a fully adjustable strap so I recommend using the strap to carry it wherever you're going and that way you can keep it as secure as possible. You don't want to, these are only 70 millimeter objectives so they don't have the frame reinforcement like the larger 80s and 100s do. Um, they're probably, this is probably the max weight you're going to want to hold with your hand because I can still securely hold them up and look for a while with them before my arms get too tired. Now, you know, depending on how good a shape your arms are, that could vary from person to person, which is why you have the tripod adapter. The lens cap, uh, this little uh, thread cap comes off here, and we'll reveal the actual threads for the uh, adapter. Very well done. It, uh, the unit feels very solid. The uh, rubberizing, I don't think, is overdone. I think it's done well. Uh, again, good feel to it. The eye cups are the same material, except a little lo little larger relief eye cups in the 7x50. So we'll take a look right here. 7x50s have not quite as not quite as much eye relief as you have with the uh, with the 12x70s. Uh, although this field of view is going to be a little bit wider field of view because this field of view is 6.8. This field of view here, as you can tell by your indicator, is only 4.6. But that's because these are 12 magnification, so everything's going to be 12 times larger than you would see with a normal eye. The, uh, it looks like, other than that, the same adjustment type of hardware with just some minor changes in the pattern. And of course, the much larger objective lenses. This is even larger than the refractor telescope that I have so it's going to be curious tonight to see the difference in how much light I can gather probably going to drive out to a good dark site tonight how much light I can gather with these by the 50 to be a pretty good little experiment on some of the medium uh, Messier objects M objects but uh, as far overall size of course they say size doesn't matter but it doesn't binoculars at least when it comes to the size of the objective lens and of course, again, it came fairly well packed in the box with good, it was supported all the way through. I recommend holding the packaging and shipping until you check your optics and make sure that everything is working properly. Um, and of course, I'll go over a couple of quick ways you can do that. First thing you're going to want to check is with any binoculars, if you can look at them in the store, and even though it's daytime, you can't go out and pick them. And you look at any objects at night, you can look through the lenses and look and see the light reflecting. You may not see it too well there, but if you have a background with enough light you can look through, 
and look at the pupillary size. These ones are you want it, you want these little discs in here to be as round as possible. If they're cut off at the edges, it means that you don't have a perfectly round uh, pupillary uh, area there. Now, first of all, you're going to have to determine well just how good are these going to be because you're going to divide your objective lens by the magnification. So that's going to yield a pupil size of about 6.3. So for these binoculars, that's pretty good. When you go up to the 15 by 70s, like some of its brothers, your pupil size is going to go down a little bit. Now, the older you get, your pupil in your eye loses its ability to dilate and expand. Uh, most people are around 50 years old. The max their pupil will expand to is around 5 millimeters. I think mine's between 5 and 6 because I've taken care of my eyes and I just haven't had the wear and tear on them that other people my age have. But uh, again, the real test is when you actually go out and do an observation with them. And then you'll see exactly how effective they are. Uh, right now, you can get these for various prices, anywhere from $80 or lower. I recommend you go to check your places like Amazon.com or B&H Optics. I think even Walmart and Sam's Online had them for about $50. So, again, where you where you pick them up, that's that's going to be optional for you. Uh, I got them through Amazon, and because I signed up for the free Prime, one month Prime subscription, they gave me free two day shipping. So I ordered this just day before yesterday, and they're already here. But uh, again, after tonight, I'll take out take them outside. Hopefully, we'll have clear weather. Last night it was kind of partly cloudy with intermittent gaps where I could go out there and actually uh, u use my other binoculars. But that's going to be the real test. If you can't test them in the store, well, if you can test them, at least you can look and see that, for example, certain things like, are they sturdy? Um, it, when you look through the eyepiece, do you have a good image? Does the, does the focus mechanism work properly? Is everything smooth? See, these are very smooth. And of course, your, your, your adjustment. This, for most binoculars, the thumb wheel controls the focus for both for both of your lenses, but the left objective or the, the left eyepiece, you control the focus directly with the knob. And then if you have 20-20 eyes, you probably won't need to make an adjustment on here. But if your right eye is a little off from your left eye like mine is, you'll have to make a minor adjustment on you know with your settings here, the positive or minor, usually it's not a big deal. It's worked really good with the 7x50, so I don't see it being any different with with the 12 by 70s, uh, optical quality difference being, I know for a fact that the pri the poor prisms in, in in the 12 by 70 are better than the ones in the 7 by 50 because the 70 uh, 7 by 50s use the the box seven glass, which is slightly less uh, refined optic glass than the poor prisms in the 12 by 7 because these use the BK fours. Which I remember, I had a pair of uh, Nikon's. 7x50s, or not Nikon, Bushnell 7x50s that had BK4s that I got back at Walmart about 10 years ago. And those had extremely, very crisp, bright images. This still has a bright image, but if you've seen the difference, you'll be able to tell. Most people won't recognize or be able to tell, but after you've used enough different grades of, of binoculars, you begin to tell the difference between those that are a little better and you know those that are of poor quality. Obviously, you don't want a poor quality set of binoculars for astronomy because you're going to get chromatic aberrations from bright stars and the moon. You'll see if you look at the moon through the binoculars and you see multiple ghost images. Yeah, that's that, that's just not those. But those binoculars need to be used strictly for terrestrial viewing, like you know hunting birds. So. I would rather spend a little bit more and get that little bit better quality so that way I can use them not only for astronomy but also use them for you know bird watching when I go hunting you know, outdoors or just general you know sports or whatever you're going to use them for. But as far as for the money right now I think what happened is this is the story behind the Comatrons. A few years back Celestron started making these to promote a couple of comets that were going to that were forecast to be supposedly quite quite spectacular but they all fell through 
fortunately now in 2015 we have C2013 US10 Catalina which is already brightened up to magnitude 6 so that's promising to be a pretty uh, so far if it if it maintains its course come November before Christmas time it should start to brighten up and be visible fairly easily in the northern hemisphere how large the coma will get how big the tail will get well again they have no way of knowing that. They can really try to predict by the mass and shape of the comet and get some idea of how big it's going to be. But if if you want something simple you can get quickly. They'll never you to go out early in the morning and you know find the comet quickly or whether objects you're looking for. This series is a pretty good choice to start with. These, I've seen them for thirty dollars for the seven by fifties. And now these are down to around between fifty and sixty bucks if you can find the you know the right outlet for it. And for the size, you can see these for hunting, whatever you need, the magnification, the objective lens, and crisp images will just, I don't see what else you would, this should meet all your binocular needs in one sitting right here. And of course, there's a tripod adapter. If you're going to be in a blind or deer blind or whatever it is, you can just set them up. You know, you're pig hunting from a tree stand, you just set it up there and make sure your tripod is fastened permanently to your stand so you can just be sitting down there and watching with it. And then, boom, there you go. And of course... Again, they're still light enough that you can use them for short periods of time before your arms get tired, but the higher magnification means any little movement you make is going to be more visible in the actual eyepiece itself, so bear that in mind. Yes, they do give you a strap, but for the most part, I think they intend for most people are probably going to have to resort to using the tripod option. So, again, these are pretty much cut and dried. This part attaches to your, uh, clips into your, dang, your actual tripod stand and this just screws into the actual fitting in the binocular. And it also helps to have a good steady tripod, preferably a, a, a photographic grade tripod with good sturdy metal legs. So the, if they're solid, the heavier the tripod is, likely the better it's going to be, especially if it gets a little windy. And of course, basic instruction manual giving you focusing and some basic uh, information as well as a little cleaning cloth. Of course the one that came with the smaller brother was blue but I guess it's just they get them in bulk and they just stick them in the packaging when they seal them up. So until the next clip. Out.